Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today on Wednesday, April 6th, right here in the locker room. I'm Alan Locker. Today, we are celebrating the 40 years of Esther Valentine with the talented actress Kate Linder, who made her debut on CBS's The Young and the Restless 40 years ago this month and remains a vital member of the top-rated CBS daytime. The star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in April of 2008, in addition to her role as Esther, Kate has had roles in the feature films Hysteria and Erased, Miss Meadows, Gary Marshall's Mother's Day, Voice from the Stone, The Charnel House, and Echo Boomers. She will be seen next in the features Charlie Matthews' Book of Leah and Shriver. If you're Kate Linder, you also don't quit your job as a United Airlines flight attendant because you're cast for a one-day, one-line role on The Young and the Restless. She has done both jobs simultaneously for these 40 years she's been on the show. On April 21st, her character's now iconic costume will be unveiled as part of the ongoing Lobby Tribute exhibits at the Hollywood Museum, located in the world-famous Max Factor Building in California. Kate will be there for the opening night reception, along with several of her castmates from The Young and the Restless. The maid who came to stay for 40 years. It is such a pleasure to welcome Kate Linder to the locker room. Hey, Kate. Oh, hi, Alan. Thank you for that beautiful, nice intro. <laughs> You're <day>. so welcome. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. We were, we were just talking backstage, you know, to think if you didn't say yes for that one day, one line role. I wouldn't you know. be here talking to you, and that would be really sad. No, I know. I just hired for one day, and here it's, we are. I can't, I can't believe it. It, it, it really later. is. 40 it's, years later. And, and to have kept your other day job for the same time, <laughs> it is really quite an accomplishment. Let, let's go back to 1982. What do you remember about getting the call to play this part? Well, it, it was interesting because I went in on a general interview uh, with Tom Palmer, who was the casting director at the time. And um, I left him a tape of some of the stuff I'd done, you know, after talking to him, I, I went home. I wasn't auditioning for any specific role. And I got home and thought, oh, my, you know, you go on hundreds and hundreds of interviews or auditions and you know, was this ever going to happen? And then his assistant, who at the time was Jill Newton, also a casting director, but she was his assistant at that time. And she called me and she said, well, uh, Tom is finished with your tape and you can pick it up. I said, already? She said, yeah. She said, he usually doesn't do this, but it's really strange. After you left, he just went right in and, and looked at it. So I said, okay, well, I'll be down in a couple of days because I didn't live really close. To, we didn't live close to the studio. So a couple of days later, he called me. He said, listen, I have this role. It, it's so small that if you blink, you're going to miss it. But he said, I'm looking for something else for you on the show. And um, usually that doesn't happen. If you, if you do something, you know, that on the show, that's it. You're not going to, you can't come back with something else. But, um, but I said, no, I want to do this. I, I want to do it. And uh, so, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, what if no. I had said no? <laughs> what if I said no? But uh, I, yes. I mean, somebody else might be sitting here because they had a part for four oh, years. Yeah, you that said no. Good, <laughs> and I wouldn't even know about it. That'd even be worse. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So what What do you think sort of happened after that one day that? has led us here to 40 years. Well, you know, um, actually, after that first day, uh, that first day when I finished and walked off the set, and Ed Scott, who was our producer at the time, came after me, said, are you available tomorrow? And I said, of course, I, yes, I am. So, uh, you know, he had me come back in and, you know, I did another show, but the, it was it hadn't been set up. So I think it was just there was a dinner party and I was you know pouring wine and being a flight attendant really helped me by the way because <laughs> I knew exactly how to twist that bottle right you know and what to do hold the bottle and how to pour it so 
that was a good thing. Uh, I, you know, I never even thought of that, but yes, you, as a flight attendant, you are in the service industry and, right. and Esther is certainly in the service industry. I know there's something to say about uniforms. Yeah. I don't know. There's a uniform there and Esther's uniform. So see, I don't know. Crazy. It's yeah. Definitely crazy. But so then that, you know, so then I, in the beginning, of course, I didn't have a name and the scripts would come down and they would say made on them. I remember my first day also, I remember meeting Jeannie Cooper. I went up to her in the makeup chair and I introduced myself and told her that I'd be playing her maid today. And she took a beat. She looked at me and she said, well, it's about time, you know, as only Jeannie could do. And I loved her ever, ever. <laughs> that. She, she, about time that Mrs. Chancellor had a maid. Had a maid. That it? She's <laughs> yeah. probably been asking for where's my maid? I'm not answering my own door. You know, that's ridiculous. Um, so, and like they said, the scripts would say, you know, made on them. And then one day we were rehearsing and um, she going over our lines. And when we went to tape, she started calling me Esther. And fortunately, I didn't go, what or who? You know, I just <laughs> responded. And then other actors, you know, characters, she would say, Call her Esther, call her Esther. And so then the writers picked up on that and started, that's how I got my first, Esther uh, received her name from Jeannie. But the thing that Jeannie did not know uh, was that Esther was my grandmother's name. So, oh, wow. yeah, so I, it's really, really interesting. And then we had, um, we had a national contest for the last name and Bill Bell came to me and said, okay, you can pick, he went through them and picked what he liked. And uh, there was Diamond and there was, and Valentine was one of them. And, and I thought, well, I picked Valentine because I was married on Valentine's day and I thought that would be really good luck. And I, I heard that out. and I love, I love that yeah. story. Yeah. You know, thinking back now, you know, 40 years to Kate Linder, who was Esther Valentine? Who, I'm sorry, who, who? To to yourself, to Kate, who is Esther Valentine? How would oh, you who is Esther Valentine to me? Yeah, how would uh, you describe her? Well, she's very, very loyal. She's very, very giving. And uh, she wants to take care of everyone, make sure that everyone's okay. And... Uh, and Esther also never gives up. She's a lot like me in, in lots of in ways like that. We wear the same size clothes because I can still fit into <laughs> her <laughs> and That's a good thing. That is uh -huh. a good thing. Yeah. But, you know, in the beginning too, Alan, Esther would drive me crazy because I thought, you know, she is an idiot. She's so stupid. <laughs> she says all these stupid things. But then, and and Jill, you know, just Walton would come and make up these, she would call me a chihuahua, or <laughs> not the sharpest knife in a drawer. Oh, she would, you know, whatever was written, she would change it. And she'd go, oh, what can I call you today? What nasty thing can I, let's go, excuse me, how about being nice? <laughs> that would be good. But um, it, it, it's just so interesting that, uh, you know, I, I feel Esther and I have, you know, it's a work in progress for both of us. I feel we just keep going and we never, ever, ever, ever give up. And I, and I really feel that, that Esther, Esther's like that because she loves her daughter. She uh, wants the best for everyone. I know she misses, I know she misses Mrs. Chancellor because mm. I certainly miss Jeannie. And, and, uh, and the fans do. My, Michael yeah. said, we loved you and Jeannie together. You were magic. And the oh. love between you two was obvious. You're getting yeah. a ton of love. Charlie from London says, so nice to see you. Kenya says, hi, everybody. Happy anniversary to Kate, 40 years. Oh. Um, lot, lots of love. And, you know, I mean, it it had to, you know, what, what are some of your favorite memories with Jeannie? Or of Jeannie? Because just, you know, might not be together, I mean, you know, could be. Well, we spent a lot of time together, not only on the set, but 
off the set. We were friends. I mean, we did personal appearances together at some point. We would go to, oh, it's interesting. You know, this is, an, this is a good story. I can't believe it. Uh, in the beginning, you know, I didn't tell anyone that I was a flight attendant because I was afraid that they, the show wouldn't take me seriously as an actress if they knew that. So I never, I never uh, said anything. And one day I was in Denver and coming back to LA and I was deadheading, which means, you know, I was, uh, uh, they were bringing me back to LA, but I wasn't working. Wasn't working. Yeah. And I'll never forget. So I was in the 47, I was upstairs. I was sitting, sitting in a seat and all of a sudden, who do I see walk up the stairs? Jeannie walking up the stairs. And where is her seat? Right next to mine. <laughs> so she said to me, ah, Kate, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> were you doing an appearance or what, what were you doing? And I couldn't lie to her. So I said, okay, I have something to tell you. You can't, please, you cannot tell anybody because I've kept a secret, cannot tell anybody. She said, oh, I, I'm not going to tell. So I told her the story. Of course, she thought it was great. I don't know how she did it. This is before phones and cell phones and whatever. But by the time we got to LA, everybody somehow knew. I, I don't know how that happened. That's but very funny. Goodness, by then, the show thought it was great. And, you know, uh, so it was okay. Then people found out. But she was actually the first one to know that. So I've forgotten that story. So that's a good story. Esther certainly gets into a lot of trouble and capers. Do you have some favorites? Uh, I, I there's just well, we were kidnapped. You know, Esther was pregnant. Um, uh, it's interesting that she wore that same thing when she was pregnant or not <laughs> pregnant. Um, of course, giving birth in the middle of a storm. You know, on the where else would you? Huh? Where like, else would you? Of course. <laughs> the interesting thing was uh, we went late that night. And uh, so there I am giving birth and looking around. There's the crew standing there. And I'd never given birth in real life. So that that was something I will never forget. Um, there's just there's so many great things that we did. And oh, the famous cake with Jill and uh, Mrs. C were throwing cake at each other that you know and Esther was in the middle of that uh it, it's it's just there were so many so many things and Esther trying to keep peace you know everyone but still always protecting Mrs. Chancellor no matter what she'll and, and even to this day Esther will protect Mrs. C and uh it started calling her that you know that wasn't written in the beginning as well either her name. Well, yeah, when you start playing something, uh, yeah. you, know, you, you bring yourself. Michael is dying to hear, you know, just Walton stories and how asking, how do you create s such, you know, a great sparring partner? Well, Jess is a fabulous actor and she's uh, she's an amazing friend as well. And uh, I I really like running lines. She does as well. There are people that don't like to run their lines. You know, they just want to go there and do it. And that's that's whatever anyone likes. You know, that's that's good too. But I really like working on things and coming up with stuff. And we talk about the scenes and we, we where where we want to go or what it means and uh, and go from there. And she's uh, I'm very fortunate to have you know, been able to work with her all these years. And, and of course, you know, Judy, there's no one like her. I mean, even to this day, I walk by her dressing room and, you know, I still feel her presence. And there's a sign on her door, on her door that says, um, Jeannie Cooper's room, that the door was always open. And oh, that's I love true. that. I it love was, that. It was always open. Anyone could come in there and, you know, she, she was uh, an amazing, amazing person. And like I said, I knew her, you know, we spent so much time together and went to our daughter's, you know, college graduation in Chicago and uh, know her family. And uh, so she's an amazing well, person. 
one of the fans actually wrote an interesting question and I never thought about it, but it, did you worry about your job when she passed? You know, um, that no one's ever asked me that. And, uh, I, I, to be honest, yes. You know, um, yeah, it's a great question. Well, I, 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 yes, I, I, yeah. a really good question. I, um, well, I, no one knew what was going to happen. I just worried about everything at that point. The fact that she was gone was a worry right. for me right. as I'd spent over 30 years with her at that time. And uh, a huge loss all around. A huge loss. I mean, for me, she knew my family. I mean, you know, you become, when you're, when you play something this long and, and, you know, it's a family as well. And, uh, all families are interesting, right? Dysfunctional, all families. I mean, do you know any family that isn't? I mean, I, I don't. <laughs> I, but, they're lying if they right, right. <laughs> But, but uh, you know, of course, I, I did not know what was going to happen. And um, and there, there had been all those scenes. I don't know if Michael will remember this, but when we all thought that Mrs. Chancellor had, had passed away, but she really hadn't. So all that had been set up, and there was the will, and that and that uh, Jill and Esther own each own half the house, and you know that kind of thing. So that's kind of interesting when I think back about it, because I, I I'd never been asked this before, but we had played that, and she hadn't passed away, so now she really had, and so that kind of was in place, sort yeah. of set up. She had. Uh, you know, set all that up before, which was interesting. But I remember that last day, boy, I remember her, her last scene going up. And when I look back on it too, her going up the stairs and um, mm. there will be, there will never be another Jean Cooper. No, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Esther was your first on camera role, correct? Well, no, I had had other, uh, well, before Esther, okay. Before Esther, but this, but Esther was first long time. Right. Well, here we are, forty years. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, what, what, what have you learned that in Genoa City that has helped you tackle other parts since? Well, you know, people don't realize about daytime. It really, I really stand up for everyone that works in this medium. The, the people don't get it. There are people in this business that put it down and. And a lot of people come here and they cannot do it because it is so fast. Like I've done all kinds of other mediums. I mean, I started in the theater. I'm a singer dancer. So I started that way, uh, you know, done, you know, several films and you have lots of takes and they do different camera angles and that kind of thing. But here, and especially now you get one take. And if they don't do it, if, if they have to do it over, maybe it's for, I just want to, to not be because of me. <laughs> you know why they have to take it over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A shadow, a boom shadow. It was her fault. <laughs> yeah, I'm not my fault, you know. Um, and so people have no idea yeah. how difficult, difficult this medium is. And a lot of people come on our show and they can't do it. They'll, they'll say, you know, we, we do the scene and, they, and it goes, okay, thank you. And the person will turn to me, what do you mean, thank you? Don't we do it again? <laughs> no. <laughs> No. <laughs> would, so. would, would you say that's the biggest change since April of 1982? Like the, the speed? Yeah, yeah. You know, things are, things have always been fast, fast and furious because we would do a, a primetime show, a nighttime show takes a week to film an hour and we do it in one day. So it's very, very, very fast. And, and, and today probably parts of other episodes in one day as well. Not right. Just, and, yeah. and there are times where you have to do that, where you have to have uh, scenes from another episode uh, put in there as well. So I'm, I'm proud of our show. It, it's, it's, I'm so proud to be part of it. It's the number one show. And, and, and for good reason, I mean, our writers are amazing that they come up with every day, you know, different things that they come up with and, you know, our crew, hair and makeup, wardrobe, everyone, the office, everyone. It's a, it's a, it takes a village, right? It's a team. It does, yeah. It yeah. Everyone. Uh, I, I wouldn't want 
the writer's job for sure. <laughs> I know. It's something to, to yeah. churn, churn out that story. Yeah. But for 40 years, you have had fans from all over the world fall in love with Esther Valentine mm -hmm. and your relationships with Mrs. Chancellor and Jill. What, what has that been like for you interacting with fans for all these years? I love it. Because if it wasn't for the viewers, if it wasn't for the fans, like and viewers like Michael, that is tech, that's you know writing yep. right now. I, if it wasn't for all of all of you, yeah, I wouldn't be here right now. We wouldn't be here. Young and the Restless wouldn't be here. And uh, I am eternally grateful to all of them. And and to I've met people from all over the world too. Um, I was I spend you know. A, a lot of time in Toronto because we do these teas, you know, like, um, you know, Young and the Restless has afforded me the opportunity to give back. And so we've been able to raise a lot of money, over several million dollars. And my castmates have, have helped me with that. And 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 because they're so generous and I'm so grateful to them. But I, in Toronto, I, I'll, I never forgot. I was walking down the street and all of a sudden I'm hearing a voice going, Esther. Esther, hi, Esther. And I'm looking around, there's no one. Then I look up and there was like, you know, apartments up there and, I'm, and they're yelling out the window. And I mean, how do they even know it's me? I, I, that, I, I, I'm always shocked. In fact, the other day too, I was in a market and, you know, we're wearing masks and everything. And someone said, oh my gosh, you're Esther. And I'm, I thought, how do they know that? I don't yeah. even know how they would know. Um, but believe me, the fact that they do and the fact that they come up to me, it is the honor is mine. Believe me. I love that. I love that. Tell me, where did your love of dance and acting begin? Oh, I started dancing when I was three as a tap dancer. And, uh, you know, my mother just told me this story the other day, too. <clears throat> this is interesting. She said, and I didn't know this, she said she put me, they put me in dance because I was so shy and I wouldn't let go of her skirt. I mean, if we went to anywhere, I wouldn't let go of her. And so they they put me in dance. So they thought that would help. I never knew that story. I said, what? Um, and, Which is fascinating because yeah. you're an actress and a flight attendant who deals with people <laughs> all yeah. the time in so both professions. Both professions. Right, Alan. So I guess it must have worked, I guess. Yeah, it really did. <laughs> I, I don't know. So, but I still, to this day, uh, like I said, still go to dance. Uh, Dean Barlow is my uh, choreographer. He trained Paula Abdul. Um, oh, wow. I'm there, you know, several days a week. And if I'm not, you know, working or, or here with you or, or flying, that's <laughs> where you'll usually find me. Um, I loved, you know, theater. I started in there. I remember, oh my gosh, I can't believe it because no one usually asks me these kinds of things. This is great, Alan. I, I love <laughs> these questions because I, uh, my, I started doing plays in like junior high school. And, um, there was this, the first one was called Antic Spring. I played the role of Blossom. <laughs> I can't, I can't believe it's all coming back to me. Oh my gosh. Um, and that was even more than 40 years ago or about a really long time ago. But I, I loved it. I loved, and you know, the difference, I mean, they're all different and all the mediums are different, but with stage, when you're doing a play, you know right then whether the audience yeah. likes you or doesn't like you or they love you or they hate you. You have the reaction. And so you know if you're doing a good job or not. Um, well, that that's interesting. That's a great segue, you know, just for back to YNR for a minute, because when you started, you know, the reaction you would get would come via snail mail. And then as, you know, time and the digital world came about and social media, do you remember a time of noticing the difference in the impact of, you know, YNR and, and Esther you know, people talking about you on social media and, you know, it's, it's such a, you know, cause you started out with, you, you'd have to wait for mail to arrive from fans that they liked a story or didn't, but then social media hit and boom, you know, instantly. Right. 
you, you do know and 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 uh, social media is really interesting. I think there are really good things about it and not so good things about it. And uh, I know as far as with White R, I felt like, well, they keep calling me back, you know, in the beginning, I must be doing something right. And now I think, well, I must be doing something right. <laughs> four years, I'm four years and counting. I love to say the and counting. And part. counting. <laughs> very, very, very true. You earned your theater degree at San Francisco State University. Yeah. What what do you think that experience taught you and helped? Oh, it, it well, I think it's interesting. I was talking to someone in wardrobe about this. You can always tell a theater trained person, okay? Because in the theater, you learn that you hang up your clothes. When you're mm -hmm. finished, you hang up your, you don't leave everything around in your dressing room for someone else to pick up. Yeah. You know, you to take care of your own, things. You make sure that your props are in place. Uh, you make sure you look good. And of course, people do that here as well. But I have never forgot. I If I have a prop, I'm not going to leave it. I just, I want to make sure it's there. I don't want to be the reason that they stop or how you look. I mean, when people are watching you on screen and they say, wow, you know, look at Esther today, you know, you, you just want to make sure that everything is in place and everything's right. And I think that uh, theater, I really learned a lot from theater by doing that. Yeah. Plus memorization. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. And you know, when you do, when you do lots of lines like this, it's like you're short, it's like cramming for a test, right? You're short term. So you learn a lot and then you go on to the next scene. And, and what if I had to, go back at the end of the day and do the scene from the beginning of the day. You know, I might, I better, I would have to look at it again because you go, uh oh, but you know, in theater and I, that's why I like doing theater still because it keeps you sharp and, you know, knowing your lines and, and working on things. And uh, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Do you have a, do you have a dream role that you'd still love to play? Oh, uh, well, I, of course I still want to do, I, I'm never giving up, but I would like to do Broadway at some point. And I always thought it would be really great to play Eva Perone. Oh, wow. Great yeah. role. Great yeah. role. Yeah. Do you have a favorite role you uh, performed in high school? Oh, yeah. Well, I played Anne Frank in Diary of Anne Frank. And <gasps> wow. that, was, uh, that was a huge role, and I was uh, honored to play that. Wow. So, yeah. That, that, and in high school, you know. Yeah, that's. One would think. I mean, this is all I ever wanted to do. Believe me, I, I'm so fortunate because I don't have to press the snooze alarm. You know, when I get up, I'm excited to go to work. I'm excited to come here and speak to you. I, I love this so much. And I had um, no one in my family was in the business. So, you know, there was no one to help. I just had to keep taking, you know, you take one step forward and two steps back. I still feel like that sometimes. Yeah. I don't take it for granted. I can I tell. To go Gratitude. upstairs and never come back down, you know? I, very <laughs> I true. But you, you, I can feel the gratitude. You know, you're grateful for everything and I love am. what you're doing. Yeah, we all need to be grateful. And if, and we all need to give back. And if we if, if all of us gave back a teeny little bit, can you imagine? Can you imagine where we would be now? So, amen to that 100%. Yeah. You met your late husband, Dr. Ronald Linder, while working at the university. Tell us about him, but what do you remember of, of that first meeting? Well, I was working, it was interesting because I um, graduated from San Francisco State, but I was working in the activities office there. And uh, I hadn't filed for graduation yet so I could still do plays there and everything so he but he came uh in our office one day because he was uh doing something that came under our office and so you know we met and then um uh we were totally different <laughs> totally different but I was doing promises promises hmm. uh at Woodminster with Joanna Gleason actually and um and so he, uh, one night, you know, 
you know, he took, he took me there to play and, um, he just thought it was great what I did and, you know, what I wanted to do. And he was so, so supportive of, of my career and, and so part of everything, um, you know, he, and I still feel like he's here, sorry, as well. I mean, in 40 years, I mean, he was part of all of it. He, and, I was and you were married for 41, yeah. right? Yes, I was, I mean, I was, he was part of it when I, when I got that first day. I'm so sorry. He no, was, don't be sorry. Please. He was, when I, when I heard from Tom Palmer and um, he said that, you know, that offered me this role. I'll never forget. I was jumping up and down all over the driveway. He came home and I was, you know, he was so excited for me. So having support at home goes a, a very oh. long way. It, right. it makes makes it all better, doesn't it? It just makes it. Oh, totally. To share share and, that with. And, and, you know, the interesting thing is, that, um, you know, I, I think about my first line like you brought up a while ago, and I it said it had to be great acting because it was something that my family never heard, that line, dinner is served, right? <laughs> he never heard that. So, <laughs> you know, but no, he, he was <laughs> he's extremely, extremely supportive. And I know somehow he knows that we're he's, he's he's toasting to you right now yeah, he, yeah. he certainly is well i told you backstage that you and my sister monique have something in common you know she's been a flight attendant with united airlines for 40 years what prompted you to start flying oh alan th this is this is good too because um you know it's at san francisco state and uh, and and ron was in my life by this time and and he has actually suggested, he said, you know, that might be a good job because you don't have to go to it every day. And then it, it could allow you time to, you know, uh, work on your career. And so, okay, well, I first started flying for trans, before United, for Trans International. I was a charter. And uh, Ron, <laughs> it, it's so funny. He used to joke about this when people would ask him how long, we were married, he would divide it in half because I was gone half the time. <laughs> we were gone half the time. I mean, you know. Uh, that, yeah, that's great. You thought you were coming because it was a charter and, you know, you thought you were going to be home at a certain time and a certain day, but then things changed and you didn't get home then. So um, I eventually had to leave that, actually, and unfortunately, uh, United hired me and I used the... Uh, same premise that, you know, this would allow me time off to pursue my career. And then after I'd been doing the show and after, uh, you know, Jeannie telling everyone, you know, about that. Did I tell you that part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I told you that part. So, um, and people knowing and everything. And I thought, you know what, as long as I can do both of these really well, then I'm going to keep doing them because let me tell you, Alan, you can't forget who you are. When one day I get to speak with you, the other day I'm on the set, I'm playing Esther. The other day I'm serving coffee at 35,000 feet. And seeing the world, don't forget, in yeah. the process. Yeah, you don't forget <laughs> who you are that way. So I, I think it's a good thing. Speaking of seeing the world, I mean, what are some of your favorite places you've traveled? Oh, um, well, I have to say, though I haven't been there in a while, um, Hong Kong mm -hmm. is one of my very, very favorite places. It's changed now because uh, when I first started going there, um, you know, it was run under the British. So it, it is different. But you really know you're in a foreign country. There's, there's no doubt about it. So uh, I, I really enjoyed going there. There's a lot of places that I, that I haven't been uh, that I would like to go to. And then I, of course, love going to Australia. And the show is huge in Australia. So that's always fun, too. Uh, you, you, you work there. Oh, but from, from California, it's not as bad as from New York. But it's 
still works. Oh, it's far. It's yeah. Right. It's still <laughs> you work. Far. You worked the Australian flight. I have. Yeah, I have. When I started the show, I st I I haven't. I don't fly internationally as much because I need to be around and I want to be sure that I can make it back to work for, <laughs> because the show is my priority. So I yeah. I don't do. Uh, but I do. But one holiday, uh, actually, this was great because we were off, and so I, I did a trip to Melbourne, and and Ron went with me, and uh, a lot of flight attendants brought their spouses on that trip, and I'll never forget that. I'm glad we were able to do that. So, there's are things that you know I wouldn't be able to do uh, if it wasn't for the Young and the Restless. I've done four USO tours. I wouldn't have been able to do any of that uh, without the show and the show's approval. And I'm so grateful that I was able to, I mean, people coming up to me, like when I was in Korea and, and this, 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 this uh, soldier saying to me, listen, you know, my wife is a huge fan. I, I can get her on the phone. You know, will you talk to her and being able to do that and, and and going oh we we I did four of them and we went on Thanksgiving and and them coming up to me and saying there's um listen do you mind going to the front gate because there's uh there's this soldier and she has, she can't come in because she's on duty and and I go yeah of course and I don't know who got more out of I don't know who gets more out of any of this everyone else or or me I I think it's me because I'm so so lucky. To be it, able to do it, a, yeah, it, it, it's pretty incredible that you get to do that for our troops. So thank you. I mean, it really that is an amazing opportunity to have and to to just really say thank you and and you know I'm sure put a smile on their face. Well, you know that's what I've always said. It doesn't matter whether you're for war or against whatever you're for. I I don't. It doesn't matter. I, I'm for those men and women that are there. So you and I can be talking to each other right now. Yeah. So that I can be playing Esther on this amazing number one show for 40 years and counting. I mean, yeah. I'm just, I'm just totally grateful. You, you must have had some funny, unusual anecdotes from flights when, when passengers <laughs> look up and freak out. <laughs> Yeah. Can you share some? Oh, there. Oh, okay. So one day I was at the, I like to be at the front, you know, and, and flying purser. So I know everyone who's coming on the airplane. And one day uh, this couple got on the airplane and the woman said to me, oh my God, Esther. And he pulled me aside. He said, I'll pay you 50 bucks if you say it's not you. I said, what? <laughs> Excuse me? He says, look, she saw you out there and she bet me. She said that was you. And I said, there's no way. There's no way that Esther is going to be on this airplane as a flight attendant. No way. So I bet her $100. That was you. So I said, well, you're only paying me 50 So you can just forget that. I'm telling you. Uh, they've had great, great stories. That is great. Well, another great story. I understand you were preparing for takeoff on a flight when you received a phone call or got a call somehow that you were selected for the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Oh, Alan, this story is really something. Okay. Cause usually I would fly on the weekends. Okay. And I, um, and do the show during the week, but this particular day, uh, it was during the week and I was going to Denver and back. And I thought I should, check my messages because I hadn't told anyone I was leaving because I left really early and I, I'll be back. And I thought I'm, I'm not, and it was during the week. I, I, I didn't tell anyone. So I'm listening to my messages and there was a message uh, from Johnny Grant, who was the honorary mayor of Hollywood. And I'm, it's really early. So I, you know, kind of listening and, and hearing, and he said, well, Kate, congratulations. And I'm thinking, what is he congratulating for me for? I went, Oh, to myself, because our show had just won the Emmy for Best Show. And I thought, oh, that's great. That's what, how nice of him. And then he said, yes, because, Kate Linder, you are receiving, they'll start crying again, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And I was, 
I couldn't believe it. So I, I'm listening to him. I'm crying. This other flight attendant comes up to me. She goes, what's wrong? What's wrong? I mean, she thought for sure someone had died. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, of course. And we, we were in Denver. And what what's happening is the passengers got off and they were cleaning the airplane and new passengers were going to get on and then we're going to take off. So uh, she told the captain and then because uh, he, he came out and goes, what is going on around? <laughs> what is going on? He sees me crying. He's eating it. You know, so she told him. So when we took off, uh, he announced it to the entire airplane. And that's uh, the first people to hear the people go on that flight. He, he said, well, ladies and gentlemen, he said, you're in luck. He said, uh, our purser, you know, today, Kate Linder is receiving a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And I, I, I was just, and I'm hearing it myself. I'm going, oh my, you know. That's amazing. I still, Alan, I still can't believe it. I have to go there periodically, make sure it's still there. Because <laughs> it's just amazing <laughs> to me. And uh, I'm so, so honored that it's there. That really is. And, and to have Jeannie there, and Lee oh. Phillips Bell there. I mean, what what do you remember from that day in 2008? Uh, I remember it so well. And yes, Jeannie spoke and Lee Bell, uh, you know, the creators of our show uh, spoke and the mayor, Mayor Villaragosa. You see, now here's, a, here's a, another story that I haven't really told, but Johnny Grant had... Um, he, evidently he was at lunch before before this happened and and he was at lunch with someone they told me the story and and he said that he oh he was so excited because my star ceremony was coming up and he said uh oh i can't wait for caitlin or star it's going to be great because he would be the one doing it and um then he went anyway unfortunately he passed away after that and so i was heartbroken and so then when we were able to do the, do it and to have Jeannie there and to have Lee Bell there and the mayor, Mayor Villaragosa there. Uh, uh, and that day, I'll never forget this. There was a tour bus going by, you know, they would go by on Hollywood Boulevard. And I heard them, I heard the tour guide speaking <laughs> and he's going, and I'm listening and he says, ladies and gentlemen, Oh my goodness, Kate! You here we are. You are so lucky. Kate Linder is getting a star today. And <laughs> stop the bus, and they're all. I, I can't. I can't believe that. I couldn't believe that. And that day was really something because I was working that day on the show as well, and so I was in the store. I was in the show, you know, on uh, in the studio in the morning, and then I went to do the star, and then I went back. And, you know, people were going, how, what? That's ridiculous. I went, no. And when I think back and think about it, if it wasn't for the young and the restless, I wouldn't be there. Yeah. Wouldn't be it, getting that. Yeah. It, I well, love that. It. Yeah. I love that. For for viewers who are watching today, where is your star? So if anybody okay. wants to. Not that I don't know the address. <laughs> <laughs> it's 7021 Hollywood Boulevard. It's across from the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. There was a DSW shoe store right there, but now I think it's not there. And I'm next to Eric Estrada, who, uh, and I yeah, love him. Uh, from friends. Chip. Chips. Yes, he's a good Chips. guy. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, <laughs> love that, yeah. love that. Um, I mentioned in the intro, you have two upcoming uh, features that you're appearing in, Charlie Matthews' Book of Leah, and Shriver, can you tell us anything about those roles? Uh, Book of the Lee, uh, Charlie Mathau directed it. And, you know, I, I um, was so honored to, you know, it was Walter Mathau's son. And he was an amazing director. And I, I loved working with him. And that's still, um, you know, that they're still, it hasn't been released yet. And so I'm excited to see that. Shriver, I'm, uh, hopefully that will be out soon. And I... That's with Kate Hudson and Michael Shannon and Don Johnson. And I, I loved playing. Oh, this is a great story. Great too. cast. Great oh, cast. Yeah. <laughs> this is wonderful. This story, you're going to love this story. Okay. So we've done this. We've been doing it. I had one day left to do on that film, Shriver. And then the pandemic hit. 
Okay. So I, but I, I was in the bank and uh, I ran into some of the crew in the bank and they said, oh, okay, you know, tomorrow we're going for coffee. What do you want? I said, really? Yeah. So, okay. I gave him my order. I never, and then that night, everything shut down. I never saw them again. I, ne I never saw, saw those guys again, that crew. But fortunately, uh, we were later able to, to finish that. So wow. I'm hoping that, and so I w was able to finish that one day. And uh, I never got my coffee, but <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I'm anxious to see that. And hopefully that will be out soon. And, and what was it like getting to work with um, legendary Gary Marshall? Oh, my gosh. And I miss him. There's another person I miss so much. He was wonderful. I was so, so lucky to be able to to work with him uh, and his son as well. Uh, he was working on the film. There were just so many different people. Once you work on a Gary Marshall film, you know, and if he liked you, you know, you you, you kept uh, you, you, you could do other films with him. And I. Uh, I just loved him. He he was so giving and so right there. And uh, I learned so much from him and and talking to him and and his wife and just there, there he so much history. I love the history. He's it's a legend. Like when when I play when here, when we did the whole kidnapping stuff here on the show and Maury Amsterdam was one was my kidnapper. Oh my god. I loved listening <laughs> to his stories and because he had so much history. And the same thing was with, with Gary. A, a, and, am I, and am I, am I, is my memory serving me as Maury from Maud? Uh, well, no, well, no, Maury was, with with Rosemary and the Dick Van Dyke show. <gasps> yes. 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 Oh, yeah. wow. Even further back than I thought. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, we're 40 and counting here. So we <laughs> No, 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 I knew, but I, I know his name. I just wasn't sure if it was, I'm trying to think who played Maud's husband. But. Oh, uh, I, I, oh gosh, I can see him. Bill, yeah, and that's what I Bill. thought it was as yeah, well. Yeah, no, I, I can see him too right there. She was, yeah. They're all, I loved all that. They're all, they're all so wonderful. And like I said, I love the history. And that's why I, I actually, you know, I can't tell you what's going to happen, but in, in a while, you know, they're going to be revisiting some of Esther's history. And and Ooh. so I, I, people can't miss that. I don't want to miss that either. <laughs> we haven't taped it yet, but it's going to be, that's coming up. And um, I'm excited about that. There's some great stuff coming up. Because I, like I said, the history, people, you know, forget about. Why, that. It's why we tune into these shows. Right. You tune in and it's why number one. YNR is number one besides, I feel, because they deal with real life situations. Like Esther was a single mother and the things that, and Chloe, who was really, her real name is Kate, you know, little Kate, she changed her name because she was embarrassed about her mother. And, you know, those that her mother mm -hmm. was a maid, she didn't like that. And so those real kinds of, of life stories and you tune in and, and to see people, and fortunately, thank goodness, because it's 40 and counting, when you want, want to see Esther, you're going to still see Esther. You're still going to see Victor and and Nikki and, and the people, you know, all these characters that people have grown up with. Um, it's it's all about the family. M Miguel says, I always hated how badly Jill treated Esther. She always spoke to her with such disdain and it made me angry. Esther was always so protective of Kay and Jill could be so cruel. See, Miguel, <laughs> you are so smart, Miguel. You are absolutely right. I think you need to send Jill a note and so the next time she needs to be nicer. <laughs> send her, send her a note. Uh, you know, uh, of all your other roles outside of Esther, what is there one that stands out as a favorite? Your your movie roles. Well. Uh, you know, they're all different and and I enjoyed, you know, uh, Miss Meadows. I, I loved playing that. I mean, they're, they're all, whatever I do, I, I, I just, 
you know, theater as well. I, I did a play not that long ago that really was interesting because it was sort of like my real life. My husband had passed away and it, it, it was about this woman's husband, you know, who had passed away and how she moved on with her life. And uh, it's just every role, at, like I said, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what would have happened today when you wake up. You think you know, but you really yeah. don't know. Yeah, and it's the great. same thing sure. with this. You don't know what, what these characters are going to do until you, because I get the script and I go, wow, really? You know, so you, you, you don't know. And it, it, it's the same kind of thing. So I, I've loved every single thing that I play and, uh, and they're all great. There's always something you can find that's, that's really good and different. And I like them because they're very different from Esther. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the one in Shriver, I play the head of this college and she's extremely di different. And Miss Meadows, I played a principal. She's extremely different. I was in Hysteria and that was really an amazing, amazing <laughs> film. And you wouldn't recognize me at all in that. So uh, I, I love doing those little things. And you see, and I always go back to the beginning of my career. What if I had said no to that one day role? So I will take a smaller role. Uh, a lot of people won't, but I do because it's just, you know, it adds, it adds to everything. And, and, you, and, and you don't know what that one line can lead to. That's right. That's yeah. absolutely right. It's a, it, it's, I, I'm glad you repeated that because it really, for a lot of people, it's not acting. It could be, you know, a job at the post office. It could be a job as a car salesman. You know, one thing, just say, you know, you need an opportunity arises. You never know where that opportunity may lead. You just mentioned that play um, mirroring sort of your real life. Was that difficult? It was. Uh, but it was good. It it. it it was it was difficult to do, but somehow I knew that I had to do it, and uh, and probably, uh, probably cathartic in some way too. Yes, yes, yeah. And I I I like like I said before, I I love doing theater because it's I have to make sure I can do it. Too. I'm constantly walking around with my script, you know, make sure. I'm oh, to just like the sort of practice of memorizing and all of yeah. that. Yeah. Well, it's just, well, just playing a different role, different character. And like I said, I call it working the program and you just keep working, whatever, whatever. Just keep keep going. You keep putting one step in front of the other, one foot in front that's, of the other. That's what we all have to do. But you really do um, give back in so many ways. You've been involved with the ALS Association, um, Age Charities, Habitat for Humanity, the Los Angeles Mission, the Lupus Foundation, um, and you're currently with the March of Dimes Canada. What, um, where did all of that begin for you, giving back? Do you remember the first time? Um, I remember I received a letter uh, that you, you were talking about snail mail and <laughs> yeah, social yeah. media and stuff. Okay, so I uh, received a letter at the studio and it was from a woman and she said, told me that her sister was really ill and, um, you know, it was her birthday and could I send her a picture? And um, so by the time I got the letter, because it was snail mail, right? <laughs> and, and I thought, oh my gosh, I, I, I don't know if she's going to receive the picture in time. So I thought, well, I, let me see if I can call her. So I called information. I do. I, do people call information? I, mean, I don't. Know. No, I don't. I don't even know if it exists. Four one one was that anyway? Yes. I I called. I got her number, and I called her, and I thought she's not going to know who Kate Winder is. So uh, I said, "Hi, you know, I'm Esther. You know, I'm Kate. I play Esther on Young and the Restless, and I hear it's your birthday, and um, I." you know, I'm going to send you a photo, but I just want to say happy birthday to you. And she said, 
she told me, she said she was really ill. And I said, I know, but you know, we'll just, you know, I was just trying to remain up and positive for her. And so then I was in touch with the family for years after. I mean, they, I would see her kids. She unfortunately did pass away, but I saw her kids, you know, go through school. I mean, they would be in touch with me. And I thought, if I can make someone feel good for even one minute, one second, it's not only my, I, it's my duty, it's my responsibility, it's, it's, it's everything that I can give back to do this. And if the show, because of The Young and the Restless, I'm able to do that, that maybe people will listen to me because they watch The Young and the Restless, then how can I not do that? So I started doing that and started giving back and started, um, I'm out just about every night. You'll find me doing something to give back because I, I feel so fortunate that I'm here, that I'm here talking to you. Like I said, I had no one in my family was in the business. So I, I and, uh, and that I can help. And the ALS uh, Association is interesting because my brother-in-law, had um, ALS. So that's how it, that started because I needed, I had to help with that. And I it's, didn't it's, know much it's about such, it. It's such a, a horrible and tragic disease. And I've lost two friends and oh. it, we, we, you know, in the soap industry, we lost Michael Zaslow. Michael Zaslow, yeah. You know, yeah, it's. It's a horrific, horrific disease. Because you're trapped in your own body, and but your mind works perfectly well. And I, there was actually um, a, a person that was on the the board of ALS, and I, I he had said this to me, and I, I, <clears throat> and I say it, I got it from him, and I say it as well. It doesn't matter how many breaths you take in this lifetime, but rather what you do with those breaths. So if I can take of any breath I have and give back and help, then that's what I'm going to do. Mm. That's what I, I do. I, I'm going to cut that sound clip and use it everywhere. That's an amazing uh, statement that we all could learn and live by. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Before we go, I said this in the introduction, but the maid who came to stay for 40 years is going to have her costume on exhibit at the Hollywood Museum beginning April 21st, the opening night reception. I, you know, again, like when you hear that said out loud, you know, tell me, you know, uh, how does that feel? And I'm so honored, you know, um, this is so great because I not only have my uniform, fortunately I can still fit into it. I don't know. Hey, that, that is something for any of us, That's male, female, <laughs> you know, in 40 years to fit in the same outfit. God bless you for that. <laughs> but, I, but I'm so honored and, and they're going to have it on exhibit for several months. And that means people from all over can see it and maybe we'll be, there's a way that we'll be able to stream it or do something. So working on that, see if that can happen, oh, but great. I don't know, but it, but, um, but there, you know, is we'll have my, I'm not sure how they're going to do it. Cause they haven't really told me a whole lot, but, but uh, they'll have That's even uniform. better. You should be surprised a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I don't know what it's going to look like, but you know, <laughs> my uniform and the apron and my cap, you know, there's a whole thing just about having the bow tied in the uniform. I mean, you know, wardrobe, you know, have to tie it exactly right. It's not easy to tie those bows that might look like it, but you know, you have to tie it exactly right and making sure the hat was on right. And, you know, and the bobby pins were in a certain way and all that kind of thing. And, and I have my first script from oh, 40 years ago there. And actually my first two, cause there was a, I have both of them. I've actually kept every script. So I, but the fact that I could find these, that's a really good. That is a really good. And, yeah. and I, you premiered 40 years ago this month. Do you remember what day? I definitely do. The air date 
of my very first show was April 16th, 1982. Wow. Yeah. I wish I had champagne. I would raise my glass uh, to you. <laughs> I would be. T- <laughs> <laughs> it is such a pleasure to meet you. You are inspiring and beautiful and just what a gracious heart you have, Kate. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Alan, anytime, because I've so enjoyed it. I've so enjoyed speaking with you. I'm and the so fans glad. and viewers out there, and if it wasn't for all of them, we wouldn't be here. So thank you all. Thank you so much for having me. Cheers to you. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Bye, bye Kate. Bye-bye. That was incredible. Thank you, Kate Linda, for joining us today. Don't forget tomorrow, All My Children's Chris. Bruno joins me live right here. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you haven't, turn on the notifications for reminders of all upcoming shows. And if you didn't hear this last week, I just celebrated my second anniversary, all because of all of you watching today. Thank you so much. And if you feel like it, check out thelockerroom.com. Have a great evening, everybody. And I will see you tomorrow. And like I say, always stay safe.